Hey, everybody out there, you're tuned in to 91.8 The Fan. You're in my corner, and I have a very special guest in the corner. Would you like to introduce yourself to the listeners out there? Hello, you guys. Leah Sargent here. Um, hope you're doing well, and and thank you so much for uh, inviting me. I really appreciate it, Jackie. Well, I'm really excited to have you on the show because, as I was saying to the listeners um, beforehand, you've been in a lot of anime that's sort of... Uh, I guess the foundation of sort of the golden age of anime, the boom of oh, anime. Yes. yes. <laughs> so a lot of the fans really know you for sort of a nostalgia value. I mean, Big O was on Adult Swim, you know, uh, quite a few, years, a few few years ago. And that was when I was like in high school and I think middle school too. Mm-hmm. And uh, same same with Trigun. So a lot of people just, just uh, really associate with your voice with some great shows. Oh, that's good. I'm so glad. <laughs> I'm always impressed when they can tell which voices are which and decipher all the different actors. It's so impressive. They're they're quite commendable. I, yeah, that's that's one of the things that we actually play a game on staff. We'll be like, who is that? That sounds like somebody we know. We've talked to them before. Where are they? You know, and we're trying to figure it out and not cheat. It's kind of like a I don't know if, uh, the what is it the five five squares two game where you're trying to figure out what uh, what one celebrity has to do with another right right five steps <laughs> it's the six degrees of some somebody <laughs> yes that's what it is <laughs> <laughs> yeah well now to backpedal a little bit uh for the listeners out there can you tell us how you got into acting oh gosh well you know there's something that probably most even the internet does not know um i, I was When I was nine years old, I was put into a Disney movie called, it was actually one of those uh, Sunday night uh, miniseries type things that they used to have on the wonderful world of Disney. And um, it was called Gallagher Goes West. And I just had a small little part where I was the daughter of this man and we were looking over at at somebody who had died, you know, and it was a in a Western. So they had a shootout and the guy was, and I was just a little kid that was looking at this dead man. And most people don't know that. And I think it's out there to be found. I don't know if it's very easy to be found, but anyway, I am in one of those. And, um, that was, that was the, really the moment that I said, I'm interested in this at nine years old. And at 10 years old, I went to London, England, and I saw Oliver, the musical Oliver. And, um, I saw all those young kids up there singing those songs and dancing and moving around because I, I was a big dancer when I was young. Um, and I got addicted to it. I went, I want to do that. I want to sing and dance and act. And um, and then it just was all about acting and dancing whenever I could because my singing wasn't that good. <laughs> <laughs> I was quite weak as a singer um, when I was younger. My, my voice got stronger as I got older. So it was, I was a, a late bloomer and it was a little too late to actually make it into that world uh, professionally. But, you know, I got paid for a couple of dance gigs. And then as an actress, it was really what I wanted to do. But the the voiceover work came just really just by accident, you know. It was one of those situations. I don't know if you want me to go on and tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, feel free. I mean, most it seems like most voice actors get into it unknowingly not sure what it is and well maybe I'll like it maybe I won't and then they come out and they're like oh that was awesome let's do it again yeah no I mean the dubbing world just to dub anything was I I really didn't think about doing that necessarily I knew that there was ADR voice work after you've shot a movie or television you had to come in and do yourself but um the, the dubbing part happened when I went to college. I went to Los Angeles Valley College, and there was a radio broadcast class that I thought, oh, this will be fun. Um, and I took it, and the woman who was teaching it, she said, you know, your voice would be very good for these Chinese um, action movies like Jackie Chan and things like that. So I went on an audition, and I got it, and it just snowballed from there from word of mouth, and it went into the anime world um, And I'm really glad that it did because I just had a blast doing it and still do. I'm kind of interested. Is there any difference between uh, voicing over a foreign film, like a real live action film, versus an animation film? Yeah, there is a little difference. Um, You can get away uh, with – it's a a give and take of both. In one situation, the live action – 
you have to be so in sync and so specific to the labials, as in the M's and the N's and the L's and the, the tongue moving and all that kind of stuff. You don't get that as much with the animation. So you have a little bit more leeway to be able to fill the, a, a word in there that, that could work a little bit, you know, better than if it were live action. It, it sort of just is, it's really minutia we're talking about. But I think when we start getting into the perfection of it all, we see that. Um, the emotion is, is, uh, is so specific, I think. Um, I learned a lot though doing anime. That it's very deceiving. And I know that probably most of the fans know this, that the emotions are very clear. And if anything, what? There's, there's certain things that, that define the emotion. Um, whereas in live action, it, it could be, you know, you can deliver a line one way and the person's looking, you know, something different and it still goes. It still works. You know, so it's for, it, it's a give and take of both. I think you can be challenged by both elements. You know, that's actually kind of interesting to me because we hear all the time how you know you can take, for instance, from theater and use the uh, the exaggeration a little bit and animation, but we never really get to hear how it affects uh, dubbing over real films, like real right. live action. Right, and we're sort of we're sort of stuck with the performance of the actor. Um, you know, if they didn't physically get themselves involved and, and emote a lot, you, you know, you can't be blasting away on some line if it's, if it's physically not there, you know. Um, so I, I think that, I don't know what it is, but sometimes I'll look at a Japanese animation um, and there's so much, there's so much passion behind it. There's so much going on. And uh, if anything, I don't even know if I can give enough for it because the animation is so intense. And you feel challenged by that. The flip side of it in, in, in uh, um, uh, live action is uh, there's not enough going on. And the dialogue is saying one thing, but the actor didn't give enough. And the director is saying, we want to make this performance better. But if the actor on screen is not given it, it's really hard to change their, their, their performance much. So you're challenged in that regard, you know. Definitely. Yeah. And did you have any trouble matching uh, lip flaps or anything when you first began? No, and that was the thing. I think why it snowballed for me is that I be it was a natural, uh, just intuitive, instinctual uh, process for me. I, I I did not, I was not challenged. I'm challenged more now. <laughs> <laughs> And I don't know if it's because of my eyesight <laughs> um, or if it's just because of my own head getting in my way. But I, I tend to be challenged more now. It, there was such a, a reflex instinctual thing. And a lot of the time, too, back in the golden golden days, as you may have called it, um, there wasn't a lot of uh, discussion about what to do. It was just go, do it. We're, re we're recording speak <laughs> and it, it, there's a lot of banter like i'm doing right now it's like over discussion over over def defining um you know over articulating uh, too much too much and your head gets in the way and then your natural instinctual uh emotions are are constantly being challenged you know so that that's probably what I could say, there are, I have good days and I have bad days. You know, I have a day where I go into into a booth and I'm just rocking and rolling. Another day I'm like, where where am I? <laughs> <laughs> well, so, I can understand that. Oh, my gosh. It's terrible. Now, since we're, we're talking a lot about emotions and, uh, you know, kind of getting in your head and everything, you had one character from Big O, uh, Dorothy, that was – kind of emotionless a little bit like I, I can't think of a better word yeah. for her and I would think that would be difficult when you're so used to almost uh, over dramatizing things in anime I think I was always given characters that had a lot of color and so when the direct the producers asked me to play Dorothy and direct the big O I at first looked at him like are you kidding me <laughs> <laughs> because this is so not what you normally would cast me as and I have to tell you right now, to this day, she is one of my most favorite characters. One of my most. And, um, yes, she was a challenge for me greatly. Um, I loved the challenge. It was probably what made it so enjoyable for me to do. I love her. I think she's really, really cool. She's just a cool cat, you know. I just <laughs> love her. 
and I love directing that film. I mean, that show, that series. That was just that was just one of my favorites to do, along with Trigun. You know. Yeah. Definitely. I mean, I. It's it's funny if I go back to try again because I know now they're they're releasing a movie. But I if I go back to the TV series that was like my first anime crush because all all the fan girls have an anime crush and mine was Vash. Oh, I but... totally understand that, Jackie. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> I have I have a Trigun poster with Johnny Bosch's uh, signature on it, and it's just it's too cool for words, you know. It, it just it just oozes and drips, you know, coolness. So yeah, I <laughs> at, understand. Least, at least we understand the geekiness. We're on, we're on sync here. <laughs> definitely, definitely. And it's funny. I always really liked Millie. I was actually more of a fan of Millie versus Meryl because I think Meryl was a little bit, you know, kind of. Stuck up a little bit. She was dry. Yeah, she was a dry. Oh, and, and you know, gosh, God love her. Um, it's a, it's Dorothy for doing it. Dorothy, it's fun, so funny. I went up on her name because it's the same name as my character. But Dorothy Fawn was the voice of, of, um, of uh, say it again. Say it again. The name of the character. I Millie. <laughs> no, not Millie. Millie yep. and Meryl. No, thank you. Um, it's been too long. Uh, yeah, the, her performance to me made it work. Um where I li- I liked her because of it. And as far as Millie's concerned, Jackie, she was one of my hardest characters to play. And really? I, don't, I don't think people ever realized that. Yeah, she was. And so consequently, the challenge was a different kind of challenge. So I have to admit, on the air, I did not enjoy playing Millie as much as, like, some, well, pretty much all my other characters. So that's kind <laughs> of interesting. Yeah. I mean, I liked her. I liked her. But I couldn't – I had a hard time – Creating her, you know, it was really interesting. Was it because she could be an airhead sometimes or, or what, what aspect made yeah. it really difficult? Maybe that's what it was. It was, I always want to stay true to the Japanese original. And I didn't feel like I was. I felt like whenever I would play it back, because I was directing myself, and whenever I'd lay down a line and, and I'd play it back to listen to it, it just never felt true to the Japanese. So that's was my that was probably what bothered me on oh, and, and so, some people are really perfectionists like I I'm one of those people where I listen back to my interviews and I'm like oh why did I do that so that must have been a factor too yeah it's true I I'm and I have to say that you know I had some really cool people that were were alongside me and you know just sort of checking and making sure that it was all right but I still didn't you know I, I there are times when I hit it and other times when I didn't so, understandable just, yeah yeah and I think with that, we're going to take a very short break here on 91.8 The Fan. But don't go anywhere. Our special guest isn't, unless I chase her away, which I promise I won't. <laughs> <laughs> so make sure to keep it tuned to 91.8 The Fan. Everything you want and nothing you don't. Do you know what's on 918 The Fan? A bunch of our crap. Good heavens. You know what's not on 918 The Fan? A bunch of your crap. Boulder dash, I say. Want your crap on 918 The Fan? Quite so, good fellow. Then send your crap titled Fan Friday Submissions to kibs at 918thefan.com and we might just post it up for all the world to see. What do you have to lose? Nothing. Nothing, I say. Quite so. Quite right. Yes, jolly good. Cheerio. Pip pip, I say. Ah, yes, good sir. Hey, everybody out there, you're tuned in to 91.8 The Fan, and I still have my special guest with me. Would you like to give him a sign of life? I am here. (laughs) I am alive. It's Leah Sargent. (laughs) Yay! We we always like it when the guests come back alive. (laughs) Oh, I wish I had a better evil laugh for that. (laughs) Anyway, we were kind of talking a little bit behind the scenes, where you guys can hear, (laughs) um, about video game work and uh, sort of the, the differences between a video game and uh, perhaps redubbing an anime. Yes. You want to know how I feel about the difference. Well, you know, I think I have said this in the past, too, that, and I may have even touched on it a little bit before, that basically I am inspired by the Japanese animation. I mean, there's no doubt about it. I'm, that's, I think, probably why I got so addicted to it, and, and, it, and it was so fun for me. Um, there's such a process in invoicing anime with the engineer and the director and yourself in the booth, and even myself as a director, that there's so much to gain from watching Japanese anime. I mean, we all know it. And so when you're doing a video game, and there's no animation there, and it's just script with lines 
and you have some sensibility kind of of the character, but they really can't tell you because I think they're still trying to figure it out. Um, and when they do finally figure it out, you still don't really have the, um, the inspiration from the animation itself. So I don't enjoy it as much. Um, it's still a challenge in a different way. And, uh, it's a skill that you definitely have to develop and acquire and strengthen and and tone tone your 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 muscles for your vocal muscles for because it's repetition it's um it's being able to understand what is needed in a very fast paced scenario so i i like both but at the same time i'd much rather have a picture you know to work with well, as I said, behind the scenes, it's kind of like, you know, the player gets to experience hundreds of hours of the gameplay, but you kind of get to see the story rush by and you don't really get to feel the same accomplishments because you're not playing the video game. You're not battling monsters. You're you're still making the grunt sounds, but you're not necessarily um, conquering any demons. Yes. And you have to sort of, you know, use your imagination. You're in the booth. You're, you're given a situation. Um, and... You, you have to just sort of visualize in front of you that you are that character in that place that they speak of. Um, and if they're a good director, they're going to give you as much as they can give you so you can get in there and, and, and become as truthful as you possibly can, you know. Definitely. It's, yeah, it's more work. It's more work. Yeah. yeah, that's true because the scripts for those games can be, from what I hear, a lot longer, like Harry Potter books. <laughs> yeah, insane. I think there's one I'm working on right now, and I don't think I have to be – all that hush hush about it it's called dragon dogma have you heard of that yes i have actually okay so there's like multiple multiple characters i keep coming back and doing and trying to change them up as much as possible but a lot of times they say no you don't have to even change it even though it's a different character and i don't understand what that's about but that's because i don't play the games so um that might be something you could tell me jackie of why is it that if i'm playing a different character but i don't have to sound different is it because it's so far down the the path of of the game that, or in a different path that they would never hear it simultaneously or run one after the other? Do you know? Well, depending on the game, if it's something with different choices, um, they might never encounter your other character. For, for instance, there's a lot of games with karma choices. Do you want to save this uh, school bus uh, full of children from church, or do you want to blow them up off the side of the road? <laughs> <laughs> you know, if... <laughs> Obviously, if you're if you're good the entire time, which a lot of gamers either are strictly good or strictly evil, you might never encounter any of the evil scenarios or the evil characters. Uh, so it might be something like that. I see. Okay. Okay. I know they've kind of been a. I, I've heard bits and pieces of the game. I know it's supposed to be. I think a Western RPG. I'm trying to remember who's coming out with it, if it's Capcom or somebody else. But I, I think it's trying to go in the style where you have a lot of choices as to who can be in your party and uh, who who you can basically talk to and what you can say in response. So if you make that choice and it doesn't, then then you will have these other six choices or what have you that you don't ever hear because you've made the one. Exactly. That's- I see. Okay, gotcha. That makes sense. That, makes that gives sense. the game some replayability, too. Some people yeah. go back and, and be like, oh, hey. I'm going to try this one. Yeah, exactly. Cool. <laughs> so that, that could possibly be it. I, I wish I was more informed on the game. but no, no, That's okay. That gives me at least some, some idea of why they say you don't have to change your voice. And, of course, as a multi, you know, vocal ability type of person, I'm like, wait a minute. I want to change my voice. But they go, no, no, don't, don't even bother. And I'm like, okay, whatever. So. Anyway. I mean, it could even be a plot point. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's true. that's true. Maybe maybe it's a world where everybody sounds the same in a world. There's just so many characters and so much information that in actuality, when I go into the booth, it's like the less is better. You know, don't overtax my brain too much. Let me just come in here and do this job as best I can, you know. I can understand that. I mean, games are just becoming bigger and bigger, and they're, I mean, the industry itself is becoming bigger and bigger. I know in Los Angeles, that's where all the games are being recorded now. Right, right, right. And you've kind of seen anime kind of go slither away to Texas. <laughs> yeah, and I don't know if that's going to last. Like, I mean, I just, I'm not sure what that's about. I think it's all about fads in some way, but I feel like the good stuff always comes back, you know. So, and anime's too good for it to just, you know, sliver away to nothing. 
Well, hopefully we have another boom. I mean, it's obvious the fans are more excited about it because convention attendees are just increasing in size over and over again as the years go by. But it doesn't make sense that sales are going down. So sure. when, when you look at it that way, there, the interest is definitely there. It's just more you people need to buy it. Right. And I wonder if it's the format. In other words, you know, the venue. If, if Are we talking about video, DVD, uh, uh, internet, television, you know, Adult Swim, all these, you know, movies, features. So I, I wonder if there's almost a confusion of what is the best way for me to watch, you know, this work. And there's so many different ways that I wonder if they just get kind of like, it's just, it, it dissipates. It dissipates the strength of them all because there's just way too many. I don't know. That, that's a good theory, actually. Yeah. I, I, re I really like that. I mean, a lot of people nowadays, they realize, oh, we can watch it on uh, legal streaming sites, you know, not the ones that are stealing, but like things like Hulu or yeah. Netflix or Crunchyroll. And a lot of fans like that because, like me, they're hermits and they just sit in their room. <laughs> or, right. you know, some people really like collecting it and holding it in their hand. So it's it's right. hard to pinpoint where the audience is. Yeah, and how do you how do you... How do you make, how do you really judge your sales that way? You know, so I think that's part of, part of the problem in general. Although they say that like the movies, uh, apparently right now, movies in general, this like this particular summer was really a big box office, you know, um, uh, uh, surprise as far as the level, the, the, what is, what I'm trying to say? You know, when it, when it sales, the sales, right. they, they were really high this summer more than they have been in a long time. So I thought that was kind of cool because I was always afraid that, that movies were just going to completely, movie houses were going to completely just, you know, just wash away. But, but um, I not. think with the economy, if we even more psychological mumbo jumbo, uh, people like escapism. People like, you know, even if they don't have really the money for it, they would like to watch something and, and get away from sort of, oh, I'm poor. Yeah, no, definitely. Definitely, it's important right now to escape. <laughs> <laughs> and now, um, talking about fans and, uh, you know, uh, their reactions, you've actually gotten to go to a few conventions in the past and see fans before in person. Yes, I love them. <laughs> <laughs> we love you, too. <laughs> I love them. I love them. First of all, they dress up. My God. You know, I come from old school. I come from theater training. I mean, as much as I was in front of the camera, I'm I'm theater based and you know costumes wardrobe uh presentation going to a theme party you know where you dress up appropriately I just went to a screening of a movie that took place in 1940s and it was sort of like film noir and they wanted us all to dress like film noir you know when we went to the screening and have a party afterwards and it was just a blast you know so the commitment the dedication the passion uh, behind it all is just fabulous. Um, I was really um, charmed by it all. I really was. And I was also delighted and I felt very special. It was, They made me feel very special. So it was very nice. Well, I, I always say this. I always describe conventions as sort of a day at Disneyland because fans are so excited. Like the adrenaline rush is there. So I, I love it myself. And I, I think uh, it's really nice for the fans to get to ask you questions on their own instead of having to assume or, you know, read on the Internet or what have you. Right, right. Definitely. I think it's one on one or, or a group or, or where you're right there in person. It, the, the energy is completely different. And it's a it's a great feeling. And now, do you have any conventions coming up? Well, you know, that's the problem is uh, conflict with other work. Because I do ADR work and I do on-camera work now. So it's been very difficult for me when they ask to schedule uh, to invite me. They invited me. I was invited to a couple of things. But I, I look at the schedule or the time and I just go, you know, it isn't real good for me right now to break away from the momentum of my other work that I'm doing um, to go to a convention, I'd love to go to Australia or something or New Zealand or something. I haven't been invited there, but again, like I said, if it conflicted, I probably would still not go. I'm I'm very um, I'm a very dedicated kind of person, um, and vacations, which it would feel like, is very hard for me to take. I, everything I do is pretty much work related, and if it isn't work related and I have a vacation, I'm still I'm still thinking work while I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> 
answer. So, but that will have to be, I don't know, we'll see. I haven't been invited in a while. I think they're all sort of getting the idea that Leah's not available. So, but, um, no, I can't say I have. I can't. Well, if it makes you feel better, despite being an anime fan or a geek myself, when I go to conventions, it's always about work for me. Like, okay, we need 5,000 pictures by the end of the weekend. We need, yeah. like, to film every single panel, and we need to be broadcasting the entire time. Like, it's never yeah. about, oh, let's have fun. Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. And I think that's part of it, too, to, to go all the way to, like, New Zealand or Australia or, or even just another state right now. It feels like it would be, like, taking away, at like, a break, at like, a vacation and. And I do that. I do that. I go horseback riding um, with some friends of mine up in San Ynez Valley. So that's sort of my getaway. Getaway. So when I do that, it's hard to justify then going out again. And I think that's part of it. Um, I hope the fans understand. <laughs> I'm sure they do. I'm sure they do. And that's that's actually really relaxing. I haven't been horseback riding in a really long time. Yeah. But uh, that that's a lot of fun. I actually did that when I went to uh, the first time I did that. I went to Girl Scout camp. Yes, I'm lame. Uh, and we got to ride horses for like two, three weeks up in the mountains in Vegas. Oh, see, that's good. That's good. Yeah. It was it was a lot of fun. I just had a horse that was really stubborn. <laughs> oh, that happens. He probably sensed that you just were kickback kind of gal. So he's like, "What do I have to do? I just kind of cruise." <laughs> Yeah, we we'd all be in a line, you know, you know, we couldn't really get off the beaten oh. path, and then he'd stop, and then he'd start munching on a tree, oh. like la la la. Oh, he was totally taking advantage of your kindness. <laughs> <laughs> Horses will do that. And now, for the fans out there, do you have any projects that you're working on that you can talk about, or that have recently come out that you can talk about to promote to them? As far as anime goes. I wish I could. Um, you know, I think what happened, Jackie, is that there were so many. Um, I, I had I had pulled away from anime, as we know. There was a lot of things I wasn't doing because I was working in this other this other field of ADR, and um, and then on camera stuff, and even stage. So when in coming back to it, I was I was really recognizing that um, there were a lot of new a new crop of voice actors that were jumping in and, and doing a great job. And so I, I thought that, you know, perhaps they didn't need my work anymore and that my voice hasn't really changed that much, you know. So so if I'm going to still have a youthful voice and I can somewhat do an older voice, that's fine. But, you know, we're talking about some good actors that have come onto the scene, as you probably know. So I didn't exactly bang on the doors and say, yo, um, I'd love to keep this going. So we'll see how that – if that transitions back again because I'm a little bit um, – I'm a little bit less, you know, consumed by this other work. So if it does, then I definitely will let you all know. Um, but other than that, no, I like my on-camera stuff is this movie that's in the festivals right now, and it's winning awards, so I'm very, very proud of that. So, oh, congratulations. You know, it's not anime, but... <laughs> that's okay. We, we, we invited you on for your whole body of work, not oh, just anime. <laughs> very, very good. Yeah, so that's doing really well. That's doing really well. And that, that has a film festival this weekend and next weekend and it's won about three or four awards and so that's cool that's cool yeah i play a wild character in that so, well could you uh, tell us about the the story or the or the name of the work or anything yeah it's called in the key of eli and um and i play shoshone and i'm a, i'm basically a former hippie that stayed a hippie and she changed her name from at one point from whatever her original name was, which we never find out. It could be anything from, you know, Lucy to to Leah. But she changed it to Shakti as a, you know, basically an Eastern Indian name. And then she changed it to Shoshone because she's trying to be very, very spiritual. And it's it's a comedy, and um, it's kind of funny. <laughs> and I do funny things in it. And I have hair extensions, so they're long braids. Um, and I, you know, wearing all kinds of hippie things all over me. I'm wearing a costume, basically, um, and very hippie, hippie-ish. So, basically, it's a story about a, uh, um, a group of people who get back together after years and years of being away from each other when the key guy, uh, Eli, was a rock musician, and he died in a plane crash. And again, it's very similar to any other rock star that dies in a plane crash at age 27. So that's where the comedy is. It's like they've stolen all of the, the key emotional uh, emo um, and key, key points in, in any rock star's story. And they all get together to try and find his work 
that is worth a lot of money and it's hidden away and the key is they're looking for the key to open up the place that his his uh, master tapes are so that they can sell them and make a lot of money. And Ooh, that sounds like fun. <laughs> it's a little bit of a mystery and a little bit of a, a romp, you know, <laughs> a little bit of a mad cap. It's, um, so yeah, anyway, that's what it is. Yeah. And now is there any place where the fans can keep updated as to what you're doing, like a website or Twitter, anything like that? Yeah, I have Leah's webpage.com and that's L I A S and then webpage.com. And, um, I have a Facebook, but I'm t- I'll be honest with you, I'm not really good at it. Uh, IMDB will keep record of me somewhat. They still have all kinds of things that aren't true. Um, <laughs> and um, and YouTube, just I've got things on YouTube that are floating around. And you could put Leah Sargent as Shoshone. You could put Leah Sargent's acting demo, uh, Leah Sargent in anime. I think there's all there's all kinds of things that are like they've pulled from in YouTube that they show. I don't know exactly which ones they are, but, and that's about it. I don't Twitter because I don't know how, and I don't blog because I don't know how. (laughs) I'm really kind of uh, old fashioned that way. I'm I'm just kind of getting hip to Facebook, so. um. Well, understandable. (laughs) (laughs) Right, right. And since we're kind of nearing the end of our time together, I'm curious if you'd be willing to participate in a 91.8 The Fan tradition. Sure. Awesome. Okay. We we basically ask everyone if they'd be willing to do a radio bump for us. Oh yeah, okay, sure. Sweet. Sure. Uh the only trick of it is, is that we ask you to do your takes live on air. Okay. Well, I always thought this was kind of live anyways, but if you're going to edit and make it sound better <laughs> <laughs> except for this part, but no, that's okay. <laughs> well, we we are on live, but you know, we 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 just like, you know, make it funny, you guys, just a little. Oh, but let me tell you, I flub a lot, as you probably have noticed, so that's okay with me. That's okay with me. <laughs> we basically ask if you'd be willing to say, hello, my name is, you insert your name, I do this, you can insert characters, or that you're a voice actress or an actress, whichever you prefer, that's really free range for you, and you're tuned into 91.8 The Fan. You're tuned into... 91.8, the fan. Hey, you're tuned into. That's important. Okay. <laughs> Got it all written down. <laughs> all right, cool. All right, let me take a sip of water. <laughs> Whenever you're ready. All right, ready? Mm-hmm. Okay. Hello, everyone. My name is Leah Sargent. I do voices for anime, among other things. And you're tuned into 98.1, the fan. Ciao for now. Very close, but it's 91.8, the fan. Oh, God dang it. <laughs> Everybody gets the numbers wrong. It's okay. 91.8. Okay. You know why? Because I'm dyslexic with numbers. I didn't tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> I really am. All right. Let me do it again. Should I All do right. it again? Yes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Hello, everyone. My name is Leah Sargent. Uh, I do voice. I do. <laughs> I do voices for anime among other things, and you're tuned in to 91.8 The Fan. Ciao for now. See, there you go. Perfect. (laughs) That's great. I love it. I really am dyslexic. You didn't know that, Jackie. (laughs) I was kind of going along saying, okay, I'm going to get this, I'm going to get this, and I wrote it down, but I still said it the other way. Too funny. Well, if it makes you feel better, I'm pretty sure in Los Angeles there's a radio station that is 98.1, like the wave. So maybe, maybe that was subconsciously in your head, that's too. That's it. That's it. That's it. But still, I am dyslexic, so it doesn't matter. I probably still would have screwed it up. <laughs> <laughs> is there anything else you'd like to tell the fans out there? Oh, gosh. Um, yeah, probably. Um, follow your heart. Follow your bliss. Believe in your dreams. And trust your intuitive self. That's very deep. Keep yeah. that with <laughs> It is. You know, <laughs> you got to do those things sometimes. Definitely. And this was a lot of fun. Thank you so much for coming on to the show. Well, Jackie, thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. And bye, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> well, for anybody out there that missed any of this interview, don't fret. It'll be up on the website within the next few days. So keep it tuned to 91.8 The Fan. Everything you want and nothing you don't.